had a few different requests through Reddit and the comments, and um, uh, a couple emails from friends of mine who were following along that that um, live in a couple states away. So the key thing is they wanted to keep their original buttons. They wanted to uh, not have to purchase a full set. They wanted to keep the original buttons, original joysticks. And honestly, it's totally doable. At that point then, you'll just need to buy a box of encoders, a much cheaper, smaller box that will just come with the USB encoders. It'll come with two of these. Um, I'll go ahead and I'll link these. I think I've linked them before. I'll, I'll link them again. And you'll just have to do one small modification. Well, I should say two, two modifications to your joysticks. Let me go ahead and pull this back a bit. So the two modifications are for each joystick. In these encoders, I'm going to pull one out again. For the joystick section, you will have, let me go ahead and focus on that, four ports that will be for your up, down, left, right. If you read the instructions, they will tell you which is which. Every single one of these, uh, so far from whatever brand it may be, will definitely always come with these instructions that will go ahead and tell you that if you look right here, uh, yeah, it's close enough. Up, down, left, right. So these are two wire pins for the encoder to use these. Yet the ones in the arcade one up come with these four wire pins. And most other joysticks that you'll buy online, whether it be Sanwa or others, will have five wire pins. So let's break it down. If you order a kit, you will have everything you need with your kit, your buttons, your joysticks, your encoders, like the one I did in the last video. And if you have a five pin cable, it will go into here. If you wanted to use your original, you will have to split these four wires into two. The great part is they do make it kind of easy because uh, Arcade 1UP did color coordinate it. If you look here, you have, let me point this out, you have two yellow, two black. And you also have an arrow indicating which way to install this. If this is installed upright, or you've never re removed it because you don't need to, your joystick will be installed like so. If you look, you can tell that this is the top, the bottom, the left, the right. And these cables show you where they're coming from. So this cable here, these green ones, if I follow them, are coming from the top. Following the green cables, look in the joystick, and there's a green cable there on the top. I can go ahead and with a very small screwdriver, push down, and go ahead and zoom in on that. And go ahead and push down on these crimps here, push those little metal contacts in and remove the wires. Then I can do the same on the red and remove it. And now I have my two wires and my other two wires. If you have a two wire, this um, two wire uh, head port, I'm not sure the name of them. I'm sorry, the the word eludes me right now. But if you have one of these for two wires, in a sense, one of these, then maybe you can take from something else. You can slip your new two wires into that and you're fine. And you can remove these and split these up into two wires, two wires. And again, two wires, two wires. You'll be able to tell that the yellow is down. The black seems to be left and you can follow them around. If you want to go that route, you can. If not, an easier route, you know, a little messy, but totally easy, is, and it's always good to have these, a pack of uh, jumper wires, or ribbon cables as they call these. You'll pretty much take, they usually come in female to female, male to male, or male to female, which is what we're gonna go for here you're pretty much gonna go ahead and peel two of them off at a time. You just individually peel these off. And I now have one male and one female. If you can't see, there's a little metal stick come out of there. So the male side, you will connect into your wire. You'll have two of them. You'll connect two of them, one here, one there, and we're gonna grab another. Just to demonstrate that. Honestly, I'm gonna go ahead and peel a fresh uh, strip of two. So they're binded together pretty much all the way through. Oh, hey, that's the wrong one. 
There you go. This is a male female. There you go. Strip of two. They're both white. Easy to follow if they're the same color. I'm turning these two yellow cables. Zoom in again. These two yellow cables into now these two white cables. Pushing it all the way in. That should be able to go all the way in. You shouldn't have much resistance. Yet I will say this, and this is the only problem with this, and this is why I say it's, it's messy. And by messy, I mean you're gonna need some tape. And it's not gonna be the cleanest, but they can, if you pull hard enough, they can come out. Now once they're tucked in there, it should be fine. They're not really gonna get pulled on or tugged. But once I add my four cables, I usually like to put a good piece of electrical tape around there to kind of help them from tugging off. And then at the other end, I now have these two pins. I can go ahead and add these two pins like so in here. Then I went ahead and I have that connected to what I believe is a left or right. And again, there's a little bit of grip there, not the most, but you'd have to be careful then when you're double taping this, um, when you're using a double sticky tape or putting this somewhere inside of your cabinet. Now, this is the easiest way, because you could always, oh, if I, if I need to move this or change my cables around, you can do that easily. But honestly, if you can, you really should try to remove these original cables and put them in a new casing so that you can go ahead and plug in a new two pin port. So that's the joysticks. That's how to keep your original joysticks. If it's easier for you to remove it to do that, have at it. But if it's already in, you know, and you flip this around, you should easily be able to tell what's up. Again, look at the green wires I have here. I'm following these green wires to these green wires are following here. This is the top part. There's my arrow up. They're here. Then I'm looking at my right side here. I have two yellow cables, so the yellow is my right. On the bottom, here's the two contacts they're soldered to, the red. So red is my bottom, and then black is my left. That's how you'd pretty much set that up, using your original joysticks. Now, for the original buttons, you need to make sure that you have an encoder board that is set for two pins like so. If you look here, these are two pin encoder boards. The light up ones are three pins in the previous video. That's because the extra pin is delivering the power to each button, which is pretty cool. But if you get one of these, which I'm again, I'm gonna link these in the bottom, these two pin cable cords, I mean, these two pin encoders, you go ahead and get your original buttons and you just simply disconnect from the board that was under your controller deck into these new USB encoders and bam, your new buttons are ready to go and programmed into RetroPie or about a set or whatever you're using. And the next thing to show is this. This is a new, move this out of the way. This is a new kit that is not the three pin light up button kit like I showed before. This is the older style kit that I'm used to. You have your five pin joystick, which is exactly like the last video I showed you. It comes with two of those. Then you have encoder boards that are two pins, just like the previous one I showed you. Go ahead and open that up. Two pins, yet this is a set that has light up buttons. How does it light up the buttons? I'll show you here. You pretty much daisy link the power. So what you'll do is you'll grab this one power cable, connect it to one of these red ports, which provide five volt power. You have three here, you'll need one, maybe two, if you know, if you have a, a lot of buttons to, to uh, power. And then you'll connect these little positive, ne uh, positive and um, uh, positive negative. I say positive negative, it, it's really, if I'm not mistaken, it, it's hot and ground. You'll connect these to each of your buttons and then you'll connect them one to the other to the other. And I'm gonna go over that in this video. So I'm gonna All right, while I'm here, I just uh, wanted to point out one thing. Um, for these light up buttons specifically, they work really well. I'm gonna go ahead and if you remove, you'll have here on the side of each button, these two little pegs that you can push in with a smaller screwdriver to pop the actual button off. 
Let me go ahead and take that off. For these sets that have these multi-slat type of a setup, it doesn't let the button rotate when they're in there. It keeps the button straight. It's great because I'm going to go ahead and make this a very easy to use system so that you know, a non-gamer kid or someone else wants to use it and they'll understand which is the A button, the B button, the back button because you'll see in RetroPie or Botticera, it'll say press A to go back and some people don't know what that is. So I'm gonna go ahead and get a label printer and I'm gonna go ahead and print a uh, black letter A or black letter B or possibly even back and enter, whatever word may work. Pop these back in here so that they're labeled and I'm only gonna do it on the player one side. I can do it on both, but I'm just gonna do the player one side. I'm hoping that, you know, a person looks over and they'll know what's going on. And then if it says, especially when it's lit up, it's gonna look great, a nice big letter A, they'll know this button is A. Here, I wanna point so, out one other thing. In these Gen 3 cabinets, there are USB ports on the side, which you can use to add a controller. And I know RetroPie and Batacera and a bunch of other systems also support that. So I went ahead and I unscrewed the, the ti two tiny Phillips screws to remove this. I removed the wire as well. If I wanted to keep this port only for power so that I can go ahead and uh, connect maybe like an LED strip and get power from here, I would just connect uh, this pin to either the uh, unofficially the Geek Sales board where I had the marquee lit up or to my Pi just to get power. But since I actually want to have full functionality of this USB port, um, I couldn't find a four pin to USB mail adapter. If anyone knows of a way to get a pin like this to be turned into something like this, please let me know in the comments. That'd be awesome. But since I don't, what I do have is I have this USB extension, which I'm gonna go ahead and show that it's a one male to two females. It's a data and power extension. Some are just uh, power, make sure it's also data. I went ahead and I cut the rubber off the edge so I have this nicely um, nicely stripped USB that actually has uh, this bevel on the side, which uh, conveniently slides right into this port. Now I'm gonna go ahead and uh, brace it down with something now that I have these two holes here and this kind of uh, bracket set up to make sure that this won't get tugged on or pulled, but it's already pretty good on its own. I'm gonna run this cable down through the back and connect this to my Pi so that I can still have this USB port act as maybe a third controller. Or if I just wanna use a wired controller or something else, maybe a USB port to put in a USB drive so it can work as storage if I wanna bring in some more ROMs. You know, that'd be really convenient. And um, once I find a way to brace it and everything, I think it'll work out good. Uh, once I complete that, um, I'll go ahead and I'll probably make a separate tutorial or video just to go over how I did that. Uh, I'll link this for now, but I will say, before you run off and buy this, if you want to do it, I need to confirm that this is going to work. Um, it'd be really convenient if I could have just used this original port with this board. Um, if I find a way to do that, I'll go with that. So that's why I'm going to hold off on saying that this is the route I'm going, but I absolutely am going to make sure that this USB port on the side will be connected to my Pi to be used for something. So for this new kit, I bought which I'm sorry I don't know the name of right at this moment, but I will link it below for anyone that prefers to go this way. Now, I'm going specifically with this kit because this is a kit that someone I know purchased and they went ahead and they got me one so I can try to replicate putting this together. This is the kits I'm kind of used to. They're kind of the older kits. The last one, the last video seems a whole lot easier, but there is a pro to using this kit. And the pro to using this kit is you get to have the encoder board with the two ports um, which is great because I can use that to add some of these smaller micro switch buttons I have that are two ports. I didn't want to have to figure out how to do it with the, the, the three ports. So if you have the other kit installed, you're good. Specifically for me because I'm trying to do a specific thing and so is the person who ordered this um, for me is trying to do. I'm going to go ahead and go over this because about two years ago, this was like the option for the light up buttons. Um, so I haven't messed with one of these in a while. But the way it works is that you'll have two sets of wires. You'll have your standard two pin wire, just like the other kit. You will go ahead and plug these two in. Polarity for this shouldn't matter. So you can go ahead and put them in however you want. 
and that goes right into here, into the back of this box. So this is, in a sense, a switch that connects an encoder that actually responds to the pressing. Then you have two more pins here. The way that works is that's where the power comes from. And that's where these other wires come in. Now these wires, as you can see on both sides, just have these connectors. And you'll go ahead and you'll connect them, negative, positive, and then you'll daisy chain link them because they split into two. So you'll pretty much give power to the first one that's connected to the board into that red port that provides power. And then they share power through these chain links, kind of like if you're connecting a bunch of Christmas lights together. Uh, they'll give power from one to the next, to the next, and next. And that's how you power um, the lights that will light up these buttons. Before I get started with installing the new buttons, I'm gonna go ahead and talk real quick about some things that have been brought up to me on Reddit by a few people now. And honestly, I, I've been doing some digging and you know, I gotta just say first and foremost, thank you for everyone on Reddit who's been replying or sending me stuff or helping me figure things out. I mean, I've done you know, a handful of these arcades or any of these mods, but there's always certain things that are totally new to me. And every time I'll ask a question, they get answered, I'll find a YouTube video link. It's like the best thing ever. So, you know, it's great. And I will say that the issue didn't plague me, but I think it may be because I have a much older set from EG. And this isn't just plaguing EG brand encoder kits with buttons, joysticks. This is, um, from what I understand, going to start affecting everyone until they start updating these images for RetroPie and Batacera and everyone. Um, and what it is, is the boards are crashing emulation, emulation station, which is what's running underneath all these things. Um, and not just that, I, I've heard they're crashing other software as well. And from what I understand, the chip shortage, thanks to the pandemic, has affected everyone. Even these Chinese manufacturers that are creating things like these encoder boards. And again, not just this name brand, it's going to be happening across the board. And I really hope it gets resolved in the image side as soon as possible. So. At this board's end, some chips are different. Things, things are being recognized differently. So there is a video sent to me by someone who, um, sorry your name eludes me, but thanks for sending that video. That was the first, the first part of the investigation that led me to a bunch of things about it. And what it is, um, the YouTube video, I'm going to link below. It's um, from the RetroPie guy, awesome channel. And he pretty much goes through, I'm not sure if he figured it out or with a team of people figured it out. I mean, who cares? The fact is someone stepped up and showed how to fix the issue. He goes through on RetroPie only. Unfortunately, um, I haven't found a way to do this in Botticera, even though I have an idea I'll be testing around because I use Botticera or I'm going to be using Botticera. But on RetroPie, which is a very popular image for Pi 4s or Pi 3s, he found a way to um, edit the script in the Pi configure settings to add a couple lines uh, once you access your Pi remotely from a computer using SSH. And he walked you through, I mean, it may seem a little daunting at first, but his first half of his video is pretty much just helping you set a password for your Pi, which is super easy, and how to set up your computer, including links to the software you need to fix this issue. The second half of the video, and this is like an eight minute video, not a 40 minute video, um, he uh, pretty much shows you the three lines of text you need to add and it fixes the issue. Now again, um, as of today, this is you know early February 2022, this problem has to be fixed manually by us. And if you have a newer board that's using this newer chips or circuitry, it may affect you. So when you plug in these encoders, it crashes your emulation station. When you start up your Raspberry Pi, you'll have a blue screen with a pop-up window that says it's crashed. Or if you're using Batacera, it just may be a black screen that never comes up at all. You don't even get the pop-up. But then when you disconnect your encoder boards from your Pi, so these are completely disconnected. You only have your Pi, maybe with a US, um, with a keyboard installed or a wireless keyboard, like the one I like to use. Uh, where's the one I like to use? This little guy here. I'll link this to 20 bucks on Amazon. I absolutely love these things. Um, if this is connected, it won't be an issue. So if you're having a problem where things are crashing, disconnect your encoder boards. If it's that, you know you need to do the solution. Um, again, I'm gonna link uh, the video down below. And if you're not having any issues, like me, you may have had encoder boards sitting around for about a year, year and a half, using older, different circuitry that's, that's not having any issues. So 
fortunately for me, I've had these laying around. Um, unfortunately, this new kit I just bought is brand new. And a lot of people have purchased newer EG kits. They're having this issue. So um, I just wanted to bring that up. It is not your Pi or your flash that you didn't correct. You didn't, do, you didn't flash your card incorrectly. I mean, if your SD card's having an issue, maybe that. But if it's crashing or if the screen popped up and then went black, it might be the encoder boards. So I'll get back to the time lapse now. Just wanted to point that out. I'm also going to start um, trying to chapter mark these. So if people are here just for that information, they can go to the description and get just to that part because I know these videos are long. I'm not making any ad revenue or anything from any of these videos, not with like 10 subscribers. So I don't care if you watch the whole video or 10 seconds of it, as long as you get the info you need, you know, skim around, hopefully the chapters work and get the info you need and go. What you can do to help me is use any of the Amazon links I use below to purchase your items. That's the only thing that can help me a bit. I appreciate that. And of course, subscribing and liking. So the only thing I'm going to say about installing these um, older style buttons that light up is you're going to want to look at your description and it will tell you how the power cables need to be. Um, let me go ahead and, sorry. Okay, what's telling you here is the switches on the inside of the box, polarity doesn't matter, that's your signal to USB encoder. The power on the bottom though, red needs to be on the right side when you're looking at this orientation, black needs to be on the left side. So if I go ahead and pull a button up, I can match up with the picture that it's this orientation. These two don't matter because they're inside of this gray box, which is a switch. The two outside that are kind of on the edge, that matters. That's the bottom, red on the right, black on the left. When I put these buttons in, I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to try to keep the orientation the same on both. I'm going to go ahead and try to, you know what? I'm sorry. I take that back. I'm going to try to turn the orientation. Nope, that's going to confuse me. I take that back. <laughs> I'm going to keep the orientation the same. So I'll always know that I have black on one side, red on the other, across all six buttons. Okay, I have one side installed. To go over this again, I'm going to go ahead and for the USB switch cable, polarity doesn't matter. So I'm going to go ahead and connect. I'll put red on one side, black on the other then this two pin connector, top row here for the buttons. Again, this is a row without the red, the red power port here. So I'm gonna go ahead and connect that in. And there's that first button. You'll do this for all six. Now what's different this time is the daisy chain for the power. You will have a long cable, go ahead and zoom out a bit, a long cable like so. It's a cable that accordions out. It's just connected to all of this stuff. So it's a one long cable. Let me go ahead and just connect this end. And again, we are dealing with something that is giving current, even though it isn't anything crazy strong. It is something. So I definitely want to do this while this is powered in or anything. So you'll connect this end to one of the powered ports here. And then follow through to the first red and black pins here. I'm sorry, red and black connectors. Looking at the instructions one more time, seeing that in this orientation, I have it backwards, that doesn't help. In this orientation, black is on the right side, red is on the left side. So I'll connect that. Slide that in, sometimes you gotta wiggle a little bit. This is metal going into a metal crimp. There isn't much flex here, but there you go. Give it a little tug, make sure that's nice and tight. And then you'll connect these on and on and on, all six on one cable.
this is only one side and you can already see it's kind of already a rat's nest of wires and that's pretty much how it goes this is only one side six buttons i'm actually keeping the original buttons for the start buttons just to show how easy it is to you know use the original buttons on some of these encoder boards but um make sure on um, both encoders again i've mentioned before that you keep you can go ahead and put these wires into whatever port you want here but make sure you keep them the same across both encoder boards so pretty much i went with this face down from left to right i did the top row bottom row so pretty much this is button one two three four five I put them in there, one, two, three, four, five. On my other side, when I have my other encoder board, I gotta make sure I do the same thing on this side, that I do one, two, three, four, five. So just make sure that you remembered how you set up your wires. If not, then you're gonna come back here and you got to follow all these wires down to this mess. And honestly, the other video, the previous video with the other light up buttons, it's such a cleaner setup. I, I, I mean, I get that there's some encoder board issues right now and a script possibly needed with this, but that's going to get fixed at some point. If you can do that, I go that route. If the scripting and fixing that scares you, then you may want to go with an older set. Or quite honestly, I hate to say this because of the waste, but you can order two or three of these. See if you hit the lottery and you got an older one, even though I'm sure that's uh, decreasing by the day. And uh, maybe it doesn't crash your station, uh, emulation station. Maybe it, it works perfectly fine. If not, um, all of this mess here for just six buttons versus just uh, these six cables, I'd take this any day. All right, so I finished wiring these up. Um, as I mentioned, this Daisy Link uh, cables that give power has enough for, I believe, what is this, another four more buttons. Um, I went ahead and I snipped the end as close as I could and I just added some electrical tape to the tip of all these. I mean it's, it's not much but these are providing power and I wouldn't want this touching anything metal inside of there. I know uh, the sides have the USB and some screws and stuff and honestly you know I'm used to these being insulated. Um, yeah I don't think it's going to be an electrical issue or anything but it's probably cheaper than the stuff I've gotten before. I mean this set was like $30, $40 for the two. Um, I'll link it because if it does work, you know, this is yet another way to get light up buttons and these uh, two pin cable encoders that I showed you earlier. And I only did the six uh, buttons for each player. For the start buttons, I'm going to keep the original black buttons. I actually think it'd be pretty cool if we don't have light all the way up to the screen. So, you know, there isn't as much glare, even though these aren't that bright. Um, plus, you'll be able to see how you can just interchange between adding your original OEM buttons and these uh, buttons that you can buy on Amazon or even Sanwa buttons. Um, and if you do get the Sanwa buttons, you need to get the ones that are, uh, I believe they're 30 millimeter in height, the ones that are a little extra longer so they can fit on this. But there is an expensive version of Sanwa buttons or half buttons that will work with this setup if you wanna you know, throw $100 into buttons and joysticks. So have this all connected. I have these here. I'm going to try to tuck everything back in, put the encoder back. Let me bring the camera a little closer. I'm going to go ahead and put back uh, the original black button for my start buttons. Uh, if you see, there's kind of a, a groove cut out on all of these, and these do have right here. These do have this little piece of plastic sticks out, so that's the direction they go in. And that goes right in. Okay, we'll go ahead and attach one of the original buttons to the encoder board, like so. Simple as that, works exactly just like all the other buttons. That's in. We'll do the same thing on the other side. All right, so when I put the controller deck back, because of just all of the cables down there, um, I'm getting a little resistance. I'm making sure everything's clear, um, nothing's pinching anything. I think the problem is there's these plastic bars with uh, these plastic, kind of these black bars that hug the wood. It kind of braces around it, and then there's a screw to attach this like plastic bucket to the actual 
cabinet for these things um, that are kind of touching. Um, but you know, with a little bit of resistance, I mean, I'm talking about like I just put the weight of my hands on it, it's fine. I can definitely screw this in. Again, I just wanted to make sure that along the sides here, make sure you have nothing getting pinched in there. Like I do on this side here. Okay. Everything looks good. Putting the screws back on, do not over tighten. You will break your uh, plastic deck protector. These are pretty thin pieces of plexiglass. Um, if anything, it's probably better for you to leave it slightly loose to the point that the deck protector can slide a little. I mean, you can tighten it as much as you're comfortable with. I'm gonna. I plan on doing um, some serious cable management back there because it is getting pretty messy. But these already come kind of tied up. You can kind of already use what's there. You're just gonna have to pull out at least like six inches of slack on both sides and you're fine. And that's if you don't wanna go out of your way and include zip ties. All right, so these are the encoder boards coming through. These encoder board wires are uh, even slightly shorter than the encoder boards I used in a previous video. Go ahead, plug this in. Make sure nothing is being unplugged. Give myself a little bit of slack there. These encoder boards are definitely going to live back in there, pretty much. I'm going to either use double stick tape or provide some type of mounting for them to live just under the controller deck. There's a good amount of space down there. Make sure I'm pulling all the, make sure you slightly, I mean gently pull out all the slack if you can. You don't want to loosen anything. Reconnecting my volume controller. Reconnecting the power switch. Then here is my power switch out provided by the Geek Sales LCD board that I will be attaching to my pin five and six. That is G, uh, GPIO pin five and six, which counting from the top, it starts on the top left facing your USBs, so one, two, three, four, five, six. Make sure you have the shutdown script either already installed on your um, RetroPie image or Botocera or whatever option you're using. You can even connect this to the motherboard pins on a Windows PC, which I have in another cabinet, um, and it works just the same. Though I do have a different type of switch for that. All right, this is this cable coming out here is the USB from the side of the controller deck. I have a fresh Vatosera image flashed onto this SD card. It's a 128 gig image that I got from Arcade Punks. Um, there's a bunch of places where you can find your images. Honestly, arcade punks do make it convenient, but they have a problem having anything older than three months being seated. So obviously that becomes a problem. I'm gonna go ahead, tuck this over to the side, make sure none of these cables are being pulled on. And I'm gonna organize this a bit and power this up to see how it goes. Alright, so this is me powering it up for the very first time. The LED buttons are working. If you have a specific button that is not working, or even possibly all of them, um, go back to your power cables and flip the cables. Maybe you have the black on the red side and the red on the black side. And the image is unzipping. This usually takes about a minute or two. There you go, this is the first boot up. All right. 
Let me get my mini keyboard, turn it on. I have the USB dongle already plugged in. Let me go, see, make sure it's working. Yep, drop down, great. So, until um, configured otherwise, on Badocera, spacebar will bring up your menu. Here's an example of an image that is not in English. It's actually in Portuguese. But for that scenario, um, I actually have it memorized. So I'm just gonna go ahead to the system settings, second from the bottom. I'm gonna press my enter button to my okay button and maybe your enter button. Second option is language. And as you can tell, it says it's in Portuguese. So I'm just gonna click right until I see English. Should have gone left, it would've been quicker. There you go, English. Now I'm gonna click back for me on my keyboard is escape where you can plug in a USB keyboard, any USB keyboard. You can plug in a dongle and use various types of um, Bluetooth keyboard. I also use this uh, Logitech, I believe it's a K400 series, which I absolutely love because this keyboard does have a trackpad. But we need something quick. This little guy for $19, fantastic on Amazon. All right, so like I said, you click back, you're in the main menu. If you click back too many times, you just press the space bar, bring that back. Go to the very bottom option, press enter or okay. First option, it will restart your system. First option is yes. So the language change will take into effect once the system is fully restarted. All right, so interesting thing. Um, I was setting up the controllers, but I had to stop for two reasons. One is my button when being pressed um, got jammed. And let me go ahead and point that out here. This button when I pressed in was jammed. And the reason why it was jammed was because it was getting pinched underneath. So let's see if I can show these pins on the other side was hitting this little plastic rivet here with the screw. So what I had to do is I got the actual uh, connectors and bent them about 40 degrees upright. Um, so they were no longer hitting. I'm doing the same here on the right side, but I'm bending it backwards. As long as the four connectors are not touching each other, it should be good. Let me check here to see the ones that I've bent. And yeah, those are good there. So these are um, slightly longer than the OEM buttons and even the OEM buttons have that same setup where you'll see that they are, here's the connectors here, when they're inwards, these are bent. So that's kind of what I was doing here. Okay, back to configuring the buttons here, pressing spacebar on my keyboard, going down to controller settings, I'll go ahead and zoom in on that. controller settings. Go ahead and enter configure a controller. Hold down any button on the controller that you want to configure. Oh, I'm sorry. First of the press OK. It's telling you to skip a button. I'm going to go ahead, hold down here. Okay, and up, joystick, down with the joystick, left, right. Start is going to be my start button that I have here. Let me zoom out. Your start. Now, select is generally a hotkey, and I don't have select set up yet, but I'm going to attach three little buttons to the top here. And um, this has a two pin connector that'll connect to the same USB encoder as all the other keys. If this doesn't reach, I went ahead and added those two jumper cables to go ahead and extend this down to the Pi, I'm sorry, down to the USB encoder. So I will eventually have this set as a select. For now, I'm skipping select, but to have both emulators work, you need a select. So you're always gonna have to add at least two buttons. Uh, thankfully, these kits usually come with like an extra uh, four, I think about four or six buttons. I got like an extra four or eight buttons with these kits and the one before. So to skip it, press any button, but you get to hold it for about two, three seconds until it skips down. Okay, skip down. So A, I'm gonna follow, um, Super Nintendo controller, so I'm just gonna go ahead and go A, B, X, Y. I'm gonna skip the analogs. Skip, 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 skip. L1, R1, 
skipping L2, skipping R2, skipping the L3s and R3. And for the hotkey, I'm gonna go ahead and that would probably be my third button that I'm gonna set up. But for now, I'll just go ahead and make L L1 my hotkey. Okay, perfect time to go over a couple more settings. So I just opened up Super Street Fighter. Controllers are working. Here's the second controller. The aspect ratio is wrong. Let's go ahead and let's uh, back out of here. Hotkey and the start button gets me out. I'm gonna jump to the keyboard and make this quicker. Main menu, game settings, game ratio. Go ahead and click left until you get to core provided. You want your emulators, which are called cores, here to this side. Their cores in the RetroArch. Um, everything else here seems fine. I mean, for this setup, we don't need bezels. Possibly for vertical games, we can go ahead and install Project Bezel. Again, there's images that have that preset up. I personally, um, I'm thinking that for this setup, I'm definitely going to be aiming for horizontal games. I don't think, you know, fortunately, unfortunately playing something like Pac-Man on this really wouldn't be the best. I also noticed that my um, volume was giving me an issue, so time to bring up the fact that audio options, or, sorry, system settings, audio output may be your issue. Go ahead and make sure that that is set to HDMI 1. You may have more settings than this, but since we're getting... Uh, our audio through the geek sales board through HDMI and make sure that's selected. Go ahead, and click back. A reboot is required. So I'm going to click back and go to quit. First option, restart system. That is what they mean by a reboot. And that's all I'm going to go over with for my image on my Pi I currently have, which is a Botocera um, image. Uh, I will possibly have, I think, yeah, I'll flash a retro pie under the card. Again, I'll put links to this image if anyone's interested. It does have that Portuguese start. Um, it comes with a pretty great set of games. I mean, with a Pi 4, you should be able to handle everything on here. I mean, it was considered a Pi 4 image, so it doesn't have the latest version, but I'll go over settings another day. The fact is that we have a set here that's kind of a, a pain to install, but it does not have that encoder issue at the moment, so I will go ahead and link it. The video from the RetroPie guy, which is an awesome video by the way, um, he thoroughly goes through how to fix that issue with the encoders. I'll go ahead and I'll link that as well. Again, thanks for watching guys. Like and subscribe. Hopefully this helps out. If anybody has any questions, feel free to go ahead and comment and I will try to get to your questions whenever I can. But here's um, an original button working. You can have the joysticks work. There's many options here. Thanks.